But I have no idea what the Federal Reserve will do on interest rates. I do know that the market rates over which it has uh, zero control, although it can affect that, obviously, uh, they continue to back up. A little less so today, but the 10 years still in and out of about 4.5%, which is the highest we've had since going back to last fall. That's still weighing on stocks right now. The Dow down 361 points. NASDAQ in a deep sell-off that's almost erasing the gains we had yesterday and keeping all the averages either negative on the week or very negative on the week. Enter Austin Goolsby. He's the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank president. Delighted to have him. Austin, good to see you. Great to see you again, Neil. So tell me exactly what the Fed does at the next meeting. <laughs> well, as a, a great relief to my colleagues, and as I always start, I do not speak for anyone else on the committee. <laughs> I can only speak for myself. Okay. Now, you've seen uh, look, all these cross-currents, right? The thing is, right? we're in an environment. Right. Yeah. It is weird. Yeah, cross-currents. I was going to say, we're, we're in an environment, just like you said, with, with cross-currents. For the second half of 2023, we made good progress in getting the inflation rate down from the, from the unbearable peaks that, that it had reached. And we did that without a recession, which was virtually unheard of. And now, at the start of this year, we've gotten multiple inflation readings that are higher than where we wanted them to be. And I, I always say one month is no months, but two months, you got yourself a real month. And now we got two to three months of CPI inflation. We'll see what happens on PCE inflation. Um, but we, we must get inflation back down to target. The, the law says that we need to maximize employment and stabilize prices. That's the dual mandate. And if, if we're not getting the job done, we, we have to get the job done. We're told that that PC, that personal consumption expenses, and, and particularly the core part of that, is, is, is a favorite of, of, of you and your fellow brainiacs at the Fed. And that generally might show, not all the time, a more stable inflation environment. Uh, if it does, are we back to the, 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 the consensus that it built for at least two rate cuts, some are looking at three rate cuts, or is that also a jump ball? Well, I, I don't like tying our hands to say what we are going to do at future meetings. I, I don't even like doing that for the upcoming meeting when we're still going to get a bunch of data between now and then, uh, much less for these meetings. What are you going to do in June and September and, and, uh, and at the end of the year? Now, that said, it's clear if you take the long arc on inflation that we, re we were at real highs and that it has come way down from those highs. And if we start getting readings from the PCE inflation, which is the better measure, and that's why the Fed m mostly looks at that, and that's what the target is on, if we start getting better readings that show us that that arc of inflation coming down is true, that will make us feel a lot better about where we are in, in terms of the monetary policy environment. If the PCE inflation is re-inflating, re uh, th then, uh, like I say, our job is stabilize prices, and we will stabilize the prices. Which means you, you will not be cutting. <laughs> As I say, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna commit to what the policy Got should it. be. Let's just look at the numbers. You know, the Fair the data dog caucus is is the is the one I, I like to be part of, and we we just got to get the numbers. Okay, I, I, I was hoping to get you on a weak moment. Uh, let me, in all seriousness, Austin, about the soft landing argument. Are you confident that 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 could still happen? It, I kept using the phrase the golden path for 2023, that it was the, the mother of all the soft landings, that you could get inflation down without a big recession. Uh, and in 2023, we did that. Now this question of the last mile is a little harder. Uh, you're not going to have as much of the beneficial supply developments that we had in 2023 as we go into 2024. And we're still dealing with this question of how persistent is the inflation. I, for me, the most important number to be watching on the inflation front here in the immediate term is what is happening with housing inflation, which if you go into the, the components of core inflation, this housing 
we thought by now would be coming down. If you look at market rents, they, they have come down. The inflation rate there has come down, but that has not yet showed up uh, as we thought it would in, in the broader measures of inflation. And if it doesn't are you come talking down about housing to something costs like what it was Are you before, talking housing costs in general, also, the, 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 the real estate market itself? There are housing costs in general, but it's, but it's kind of a specific measure of housing costs, which is based on what, what the rental prices are okay. and an owner-occupied rent equivalent. If that doesn't go down to something like what it was pre-COVID, we will have a hard time getting the overall back to target. So I, 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 that's well, something I'm way. watching very closely from there, and everybody right? We're a long way from there. We're a long way from there. Okay. We're a long way. So, so let me step back and get your sense then of the conundrum the Fed could be in, because obviously you don't want to keep this going on with, with rates where they are, God forbid, higher, um, because the flip side of that is the soft landing you hope to get uh, doesn't materialize and that you could throw the whole country into a recession. Uh, if you erred on the side of hiking rather than cutting, how do you weigh that? Well, look, this, this, is, the, this is why every central banker in the United States and around the world goes to sleep each night with indigestion. Is <laughs> you, got to, you got to balance those, those things off. The, the, the way to square the circle, I think, is we're mostly got to just follow the data and, and see what happens. The law gives us the dual mandate. And if we're getting inflation down, then the real rate, the, the rate that we set minus the inflation rate, which is kind of a level of restrictiveness, even if you're holding the rate steady as inflation falls, you're tightening the restrictiveness. So if we see that inflation is on this path back down to 2 percent, then we, we got to think, do we want to remain as restrictive as we are right now for, for a long period? If inflation doesn't come down, then the, the, that answers it for us. I mean, we, we have to get inflation down. Um, you can't control oil prices, and they are what have been spiking largely on some of this recent instability in the Middle East. So that's a wild card for you, right? That's definitely a wild card on two counts. One is the, the price of oil and the price of gasoline go into the cost of living. So right. for headline inflation, that goes in there. But it's a wild card on the second dimension, which is when the price of oil goes up, that's a key component to the production of a whole bunch of things. And from FedEx drivers to, to manufacturing, to, et cetera, and so that's a negative supply shock, and we've seen over the decades what happens when you get negative supply shocks hitting the economy. It's not good. It leads to a more stagflationary environment. So we're going to have to definitely keep an eye on commodity prices. In the meantime, we are in a presidential election year, I think, because we have all these fancy graphics here, Austin, and special music. Um, and I'm just wondering, if Donald Trump got back uh, into the Oval Office, he's made it clear he's no fan of Jerome Powell. Uh, so he'd replace him. Um, what do you think of that? Well, you know, when I became a Fed man, I stopped talking about elections and politics and partisan battles uh, the, uh, of the old days. The Fed's job is to go off the conditions. We got a dual mandate. There's nothing in there that says anything about politics, about the stock market, or, or any of the Are you saying, though, that the Fed ignores I all think of we'll that? Do Are it. you saying the we'll Fed ignores all of that, though, Austin? Yeah. I, because you, Need, you, you, it needs to. It I understand. To. I understand. Yes. Look. But that pressure must yeah. be unbearable, because when you have many saying that, uh, you know, Jerome Powell want, wants to make, you know, this a little bit better for Joe Biden to be reelected, not that he can orchestrate that at the Fed, but that is his personal preference if he had his druthers. Uh, I didn't even know if that's true. But that none of that enters into the equation with you guys. You don't, you don't sort of see what's going on around you. It's the big old elephant in the room. Uh, look, like I said, I don't speak for, I'm not going to speak for Jay Powell. You, get, go, you should have an interview with, with Chair Powell and you can ask him. I know that if you You're go not, look you at the minutes Austin for the You specifically, Austin Goldsby, are not influenced by it. I don't have any pressure. Okay. And go, just go look at the minutes or the transcripts of the FOMC meetings. We, we put those out publicly. 
Yeah. It's not about politics. It's about the dual mandate. What's in the employment and the job market and what's happening to prices. That's what's going to drive our behavior. And we, we, we got to tune out the arguments about elections. That's that's not appropriate in the in the Fed context. So you also tune out the markets, you say, and I've heard a lot of your colleagues say the same thing. You don't pay attention to it. But the markets were clearly expecting, uh, you know, three rate cuts. Uh, now they're down to two. Some are down to one. I believe Bank of America is down to none. They don't think we'll have any rate cuts this year. I don't you don't want to get into those predictions. But you know what you say in that regard. Um, is the type of stuff that, that rattles them, that's been rattling the market of late with this backup in inflation or the perception that it's not totally whooped yet. So they're kind of losing hope. What do you tell them? Do you just ignore that? I, 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 don't, I don't want them to feel bad, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you mostly ignore them. Okay. Look, the, the thing is, like I say, the, the law says what we're supposed to be watching and it's employment and inflation, it doesn't say anything about the stock market. And when we put out a summary of economic projections where we make uh, contingent predictions of what will be the appropriate policy, and each member of the FOMC is asked individually, we don't debate it, we don't deliberate it, what do you think the median of those at the, at the last go-round was for three cuts in this year. Right, right. If you remember, in December when we put it out, the, the median of the FOMC said three cuts, and the market immediately said, well, that must mean seven cuts. So <laughs> That's right. Part of me just so you says, can't ignore hey, that, look, right? You can't ignore that. If you mess around, that. you're going to find out. But you I mean, can't that's ignore that, is. and the market's right. So you just you don't. If it's down a few hundred points like it is today or whatever, you, that's just all noise to you. I think that it's mostly noise. The okay. thing to remember is financial conditions do affect the economy. They are like monetary policy, but only with a long lag. So okay. what happens this week or next week, it, that, that's, that the part is noise. You, what, what you're looking for is a longer-lived signal. Got it. Austin Goolsby, have a safe weekend. Let me know how that next meeting goes. Austin Goolsby, he is the... Uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman in, in, in Chicago obviously carries enormous weight and influence here. So we'll see what happens on that.